Good evening and welcome to this community meeting for the City of Santa Rosa's Local Road Safety Plan, focusing tonight on the designs for the roadway corridors on 4th Street and Montgomery Drive. I'm Rob Sprinkle, the Deputy Director of Traffic Engineering for the City of Santa Rosa, and I want to thank you for joining us tonight. Before we begin, I will ask our host, Steve Brown, to let you know how you can participate in tonight's meeting. Steve? Thank you, Rob. As community members join the meeting, you'll be participating as an attendee. Your microphone and camera will be muted. Only today's panelists will be viewed during the meeting. Please know the City of Santa Rosa is committed to creating a safe and inclusive environment free from disruption. We will not tolerate any hateful speech or actions and will monitor that everyone is participating respectfully or they will be removed. If necessary, we will also immediately end the meeting. This meeting is being recorded and will be placed on the city website, srcity.org backwards slash LRSP following the meeting. At the end of the presentation, Rob will open up the meeting for public questions and comment. Great, thank you, Steve. Once again, I wanna thank you all for joining us tonight. Uh, your participation and input are important to us as I present the roadway design uh, options for improving safety on our city streets for all road users. These designs are based on community feedback we received during the city's outreach in the spring, as well as some requirements from stakeholders in our initial meetings that were held. We'll, we'll start tonight's meeting with an overview of the agenda and topics we plan to cover in the presentation. So first we'll go over our project description. We'll cover some timeframes for the project. We will also now run through the presentation We'll open it up for public comments and then go over our next steps. So for the project description, tonight we're gonna be, um, we'll be reviewing the community feedback from the survey results that were uh, received during the spring from our outreach on our local road safety plan. Um, you can go back one screen, please. Thank you. Um, and then we'll also be, and we'll be checking We'll be doing this, excuse me, for Fourth Street between E Street and Farmers Lane and the segment of Montgomery Drive from Alderbrook to Hammon Drive. We will walk through several different segments that have different designs and go over those um, designs uh, with the public. As for timeframes, in the spring of this upcoming year, or in the spring of this past year, we reached out to you um, to get feedback on the initial designs. We held a meeting in February of 2022 and recommended made some recommendations to the public received that feedback and today we're bringing back the feedback that we received uh, from the community now not everything was able to be incorporated into the design and we're still making some fine-tuning uh, options to to the design as we're moving forward but we're at that point where we want to get further feedback from the community to make sure we're at least on the right track so as we, um, as we go through this project, this project will be initiated through a slurry seal project. And during a slurry seal project, we are given the opportunity basically to restripe the roadway. So this portion um, of the product is basically related to the restriping. We won't be installing any overhead flashers at this point or bulb outs or hardscape with this specific project, but we still want to hear that feedback from you so we can incorporate it into future projects um, that may require some grant funding or other capital improvement um, uh, funding options. So at this point, I'm going to start the presentation and go through some of our design options for 4th Street and Montgomery Drive corridors. Next slide, please. So during the presentation, I will cover um, what a little bit about the local road safety plan. We'll go over the survey results and proposed designs for Fourth Street between E and Farmers Lane and between on Montgomery Drive between Alderbrook and Hammond Drive. We'll open it up for public comments and then go over the next steps for the project. Next slide, please. Thank you. So about the local road safety plan. So this is a, the city center has received state grant funds to 
conduct a corridor analysis on several different corridors throughout the city. Those included 4th Street, Montgomery Drive, Stony Point Road, College Avenue, North Dutton, and sections of the Roseland Creek Trail. Um, what's important about this is going through this process and getting gathering this data not only helps us design what improvements we need to make, but it also helps us or lets us become eligible for the Highway Safety Improvement Program uh, grant. And that's uh, a grant that the state puts out. And um, the only way to become eligible is to go through this process. So it sets us up for future funding sources. Next slide, please. So also a part of this engagement process, we held some stakeholder meetings with our city staff, including police, fire, our transportation and public works department, parking and transit. We also met with um, our bike and ped board or advisory board representatives. We met and discussed things with the uh, Sonoma County Bicycle Coalition, as well as other stakeholders along the corridor, both business owners um, and schools. We held the community meeting back in February, as I mentioned, 2022, and then opened online surveys to, um, to, uh, to gather feedback from the public. Next slide, please. So let's get into the design options for 4th Street first, and we're going to look at between E Street and Farmers Lane. This is the area of that segment that we'll be covering. Next slide, please. So the first section. Um, we're starting at the west end near E Street and looking between E Street and Brookwood. So feedback we received from the public in this segment was that they were uh, in favor of removing the angled parking on the south side of the street so that we could accommodate narrower lanes and bike lanes along this segment of the roadway. They also wanted to see some wider sidewalks and uh, some more beautification related to trees and such. And as I mentioned before, this, this portion of the project is only focusing on the striping portion in conjunction with our slurry, but we still do want to hear um, other options that people have because, as you might understand, if, if we're going to widen this, the sidewalk substantially, then that also takes away spaces for travel lanes, parking, buffers, and bike lanes. So they all, they're all competing for the same space. So if um, we need to widen sidewalks, we need to, it's better to know that now than um, then to save that for the future. Next slide, please. So these are the two options that were um, that we presented to the public. Uh, one option one was uh, back angled parking with some buffered bike lanes along the segment of roadway. And option two was to have a protected bike lane on the north side of the street separated with head in parking. And then the south side of the street we were converting the angled parking to parallel parking and having buffered bike lane. Next slide, please. So from the survey, we received 115 responses. And from those responses, improving the uh, bicycle lane was identified as the top priority, followed by aesthetics and walking improvements along this segment. And option two was, which is the one that's shown above here, was the preferred, alter was the preferred alternative. Next slide, please. This is an aerial view of what option two would look like on the segment um, near Hope Street, which is near Fremont Park. This shows the uh, bike transition lanes where there would be, uh, we would install green paint where we're transitioning bikes um, either across a travel lane or across a, um, on the north side of the street. There are the top side near where it says Hope Street. That's where we're transitioning them to um, in front of the vehicles that would be parked along the street in the protected area. Next slide, please. So the next segment of roadway is the segment on 4th Street between Brookwood and Bryden Lane. This segment of roadway is currently a four lane street that we'd be converting to a three lane road diet. And a road diet is would maintain the parking on both sides. It would add buffer bike lanes and um, uh, center turn lane. So what we heard from the public on this segment was that they did want to see um, the road diet installed with the added bike lanes. They'd like to see wider sidewalks again, um, and as well as more trees for street beautification. Uh, there's also several comments about exploring some different options for the intersections for crossing at Talbot and Alderbrook. 
and they also thought it'd be good to consider a future roundabout at the intersection of fourth and college where fourth street comes into college there um, and then the last um, item that was brought up in this segment was um, to widen the sidewalk on the south side of fourth street between alderbrook and brighton and that's the segment that a lot of um, school kids go from the neighborhood to the south over to get to proctor terrace to the north and it's currently it's right up against the travel lane next slide please so this is a cross section of what's being proposed for this segment which includes uh, retaining the parking where there currently is parking adding a six foot bike lane with a two foot buffer um, installing 11 foot travel lanes and then maintaining a 10 foot center turn lane so from the 150 responses on this segment um, again they identified uh, improved bicycling as their top priority here followed by walking and then aesthetic improvements and 67 percent of the respondents here um, were in favor of the road diet next slide please so this slide shows a um, aerial view of alderbrook and what we're planning to install at this point with just the striping improvements so you'll notice on the north side of the street, parking is retained. On the south side of the street, we currently do not have parking and are not proposing to install parking. We're proposing to basically um, install a, a quite wide buffer zone in this area. And that is in attempt to help make the, the sidewalk along the segment of roadway between the neighborhood south on Alderbrook um, more comfortable walking along the south side of the street as they go towards the signal at Bryden um, and 4th Street to make that a more comfortable uh, com comfortable journey uh, by pushing the cars quite a bit away from that sidewalk. And then in the future, as uh, we come up with grant funding or other uh, fundings for our capital project, we would look to be installing a wider sidewalk along that segment of roadway. Next slide, please. So the last segment along this second uh, this portion of um, Forest Street is the segment of from Bryden to Farmers Lane, and as mentioned in the meeting prior, this segment is actually has too high of a um, of an ADT or of a, a average daily volume, which is near over twenty eight thousand vehicles a day um, to accommodate a road diet. So we did look at some other options. Um, one was to um, eliminate the parking and that would be the only way to get one bike lane in a, in, a, in a direction so we did look at that next slide please and we sent surveys out to the all the residents and businesses along the segment of roadway and of the 10 um, businesses and and respondents of the 10 businesses and residents along there all of them responded that this would have a significant impact to their business or residents along the segment. Next slide, please. So with that information, we looked at um, ways to improve the, the cycling to Brighton over to the shopping center at Safeway, um, because we figured this was would be the likely route of travel that people would be wanting to get to along this portion of the roadway. And we were looking for other options that would be comfortable uh, for a cyclist. Next slide, please. So we looked at, um, for the eastbound direction, uh, we looked for a route crossing at the intersection of Bryden and Forest Street, and then using Gross, turning right on Gross, right next to the elementary school and going up to El Camino and over to La Paloma to gain access to the shopping center. And then alternatively on the way, and I'm sorry, that was, that's the picture on the, on the right, that's the eastbound direction. And then back from in the westbound direction from the shopping center, which is shown in that top left picture in, it's a kind of a larger gray area on the, on the slide. Um, you would return on La Paloma over to Geary and then down to Morley and Clyde back on the 4th Street, or you could continue through the neighborhood um, as that's also a very comfortable place to ride. Next slide, please. So one thing that we just decided that we would implement along with this is in order to cross 4th Street um, for a cyclist, we would install a bike box, which is that small green, it's a little small in this picture, but that small green 
uh, square um, just north, just up on the picture from the crosswalk on 4th Street. We put a, um, a bicycle button there to cross the street and a bicycle signal to allow the uh, bicycle to cross on their own phase across the street and gain access over to Gross so that they could comfortably navigate that intersection without using the crosswalk. They basically use their own signal phase to do that. Next slide, please. So that, that concludes the segment of 4th Street and the improvements there. And now we're going to transition over to Montgomery Drive on the section between Alderbrook and Hammond Drive. So next slide, please. So this seg segment of roadway is quite narrow as everyone who's either been on here or lives in this area or lives on the street knows, that's nothing new to you. Um, it's very narrow and cars do frequently park up on the, on the sidewalks, which limits some of the pedestrian activity. Um, and uh, because from what we heard from some of the surveys is that well, people's cars get hit if they don't do that. So that's a concern for us as well. Next slide, please. So we came up with some options that do help with that and, and also help facilitate um, bike access along the segment of roadway. Two options were uh, proposed um, in the meeting in February. Option one was to eliminate the center turn lane and add bike lanes in, its, in their place. And then option two was to eliminate the center turn lane as well as parking on the north side of the street um, and add buffered bike lanes. Next slide, please. So we received 186 responses to this. Um, and improving cycling uh, was still identified as a top priority for this segment of roadway. And 75% of the respondents did uh, want to see bike lanes installed. However, it wasn't entirely clear if it was option one or option two, which was being, and it may have been part of our survey results that were, that were being um, in favor of. So any information we can get on that from people who comment tonight would be definitely um, helpful for us. Uh, our, our take from it was that if these are all residents, residential homes along this street, and if the parking was limited or removed from in front of someone's house on the north side of the street, they would likely have to either park in their driveway. And if they couldn't, they'd have to park on the south side of the street, which in, would inherently then um, produce a crossing across the street, which is something that we didn't want to um, basically impose on the residents that they would have to cross the street every time they parked their car on the street if they lived on the north side of the street, because they would have to park on the south side of the street. So because of that, we didn't want to increase that number of crossings along uh, mid block and we proposed to um, maintain the parking on both sides of the street while adding the bike lanes. Next slide, please. Also mentioned a lot in the surveys were uh, requests to install a crosswalk at short. So this is a plan view of what that may look like. Um, and if you go back between this slide and the other slide, I know some of the dimensions are a little bit different these dimensions so actually show actually a five and a half foot bike lane where the others show a um, a five foot bike lane so depending on if the survey was the more accurate survey is is this one that was done with our CAD drawing versus the other drawing so there is a little bit more room out there than um, we had an, uh, originally anticipated and we would propose to put some into the parking lane that says seven and a half or yeah, seven and a half feet there and some into the bike lane to make those a little bit wider as well and a little more comfortable. Next slide, please. So the other segment of Montgomery Drive between was between Farmers and Hammond. And this is a little bit different feel. This is a, a more um, commercial area and uh, we we're looking to add bike lanes here, which would actually make the final connection to the section of Montgomery Drive that does have bike lanes to the east. So we're able to redesign this section to accommodate the existing parking, add bike lanes, and remove some travel lanes and a small median um, in order to um, have everything fit in this section. Next slide, please. So here's a cross section of what that would look like. 
we maintain a 10 foot right turn lane. This is looking in the east bound direction near the intersection. A uh, six foot bike lane, uh, 11 foot travel lanes, 11 foot center turn lanes. And then on the other side, a six foot bike lane and an eight foot parking lane. And 70% of the respondents um, proposed um, supported adding bike lanes in this segment as well. Next slide, please. So here's an aerial view of um, what this section would look like uh, with some green lanes in the uh, merge areas between the bikes and vehicles where they cross. That's our, our, where the conflict zones are. And then the other striping is um, indicative of, of our standard uh, pavement striping for lanes and turn lanes. Next slide, please. So at this time, we'd like to actually hear from the community. I know I went through that. I didn't go through it super fast, but there, there's probably a lot of information. So if you have questions that you'd like to go back a certain slide, please let us know. Um, and uh, at this point, I'm going to, uh, sorry, I got off track. Um, if you're making comments on a specific design aspect, it's also important for us to know if you're a resident in that neighborhood or if you um, are specifically if you're on like Montgomery Drive, you're on the street and you're making a comment, it's good for us to have that perspective, to know that perspective from you as well. So please provide that. Or if you use it as you're passing through and use it as a route to somewhere, that's also important for us to know. So if you could provide that information when you're giving your input, that would just give us a little more perspective on, um, on where the comment and how the comments are being generated and what perspective you have. So we would appreciate that. So before I begin, Answering all your questions, I'll ask our host, Steve, to review how you can participate by asking live questions and comments. Steve? Fantastic. Thank you, Rob. So uh, once Rob calls for public questions or comments, we will announce for anyone wishing to ask a question or comment to raise your hand in Zoom. For individuals participating in the me uh, meeting by telephone, you can dial star nine to raise your hand. We will then call on the public one by one who have their Zoom hand raised. Your microphone will be unmuted so you can ask your question. Once you've raised your hand and asked your question or shared your input, your hand will be lowered and your microphone will be muted so our panelists can respond to your question. So yes, I, I, I believe we're ready to begin, Rob. Are you ready? I'm ready, let's go. Okay, Our, <clears throat> uh, again, anyone wishing to ask a question uh, can do so by raising your Zoom hand or dialing star nine if you're calling in. So the first person in our queue is Eris Weaver. Um, your microphone, Eris, has been unmuted. You can state your name for the record if you so choose and then ask your question or make your comment. Thank you. This is uh, Eris Weaver. I'm the executive director of the Sonoma County Bicycle Coalition. Uh, I don't live in that neighborhood, but I do ride both of these corridors fairly regularly to access various businesses and services along that area. And I have three um, three pieces of this I'd like to comment on. The first one is in that in several sections of the uh, Fourth Street corridor, you have buffered bike lanes. Um, I don't see any with with parking next to the curb and then a buffered bike lane i would really love to see that reversed and have parking protected bike lanes that adds an additional layer of protection to the cyclists and the pedestrians the kids walking along that road to get to school um that uh it's it's we don't have any of those right now so people aren't used to it yet but it is uh adds another layer of protection for those who are in the bike lane uh from the folks parking um, and driving. And so I would really love to see that swapped. And I don't see any reason in the um, dimensions given that that couldn't fit. Um, my uh, second comment or sort of a question, uh, well, actually it turns out I have four and not three, um, is it's really hard uh, when you're doing pieces and pieces across a corridor, you know, we, we don't travel in pieces. We travel a whole distance from one place to another. And so it's always hard for me to visualize the transitions from now we're looking at it from, you know, this block to this block, and now we're looking that block to that block. And it's hard to then visualize, okay, how is it going to continue across that? Because there are plenty of places around town where 
you know, bike lanes stop and start as the lane is the street gets wider and narrower. And, and that is always a big um, conflict zone when something comes and goes like that. Um, three, um, there was the slide um, uh, on this stretch as you're getting uh, towards um, Farmer's Lane and take the, the detour through the neighborhood that you showed a bike box crossing the street. And mm -hmm. that was a little confusing to me. If you can put it back up, that could make my comments make more sense or maybe be able to answer my question. But it looks like you're expecting, yeah, that's the one there on the right, that you're expecting a cyclist who's moving, I guess it's an upward on the way the slide is, stopping pushing a bag button and then crossing and taking that little jog to go on to gross as okay. opposed to coming up forth here where those arrows are and making you could do a either. left turn you, you could do either so there's a camera there so that has okay. it does have detection if you if the cyclist wants to take the lane that's absolutely would work as well but okay we, we thought it would be beneficial to have a button there for those who weren't comfortable doing that Okay. Okay. Thanks. And then just my last comment, when you were talking about the parking on Montgomery and about you can't take the parking away on because then people might have to park in their driveway. And, and even though the vast majority of people taking the survey said that they want to see things be better for bikes. And it sounds like you're actually prioritizing um, storage of private property in the public right of way. Right. The, the, we need more infrastructure for the people moving the, the vulnerable users on bikes and on foot and to not put in better bike infrastructure because people might have to park in their own damn driveway is um a, a misuse of, of public space and public funds in in my opinion thank you thank you Iris. so i'll i'll address um the first comment was that i thank you for um, bringing that up actually that's something that we did discuss with um, in our stakeholder group with um, and our fire department actually has some concerns because 4th Street is so one of the things uh, by converting this and taking away a travel lane was that uh, because this is an evacuation route that is definitely heavily used for when Rincon Valley area has to evacuate in that area, they want to be able to have the space so that we can still have two lanes of two vehicles of traffic exiting the area going towards the 101 or towards the downtown area um, the configuration that we propose meets that criteria as it still provides um, enough room with the bike lane and the buffer lane for there to be a potential uh, enough width for the travel lane um, in conjunction with the other travel lanes already there and then the fire department would still also need the center turn lane in order to be able to respond to um, emergencies as that's occurring. So that was one of the criteria that they had um, that we that we needed to meet. Um, I can tell you that with our design, we are definitely taking into consideration that we are not intending to drop any of the bike lanes along the route. That was something that. Um, we've heard in the past and we are doing our best not to do that. I can't think of one location where we're going to actually have to drop the bike lane as we're putting them in here. And then your last comment, I talked about the bike box, your last comment um, about prioritizing. Uh, so if we're not prioritizing um, the vehicles to park there, we're, we are prioritizing that we don't want pedestrians to have to cross the street. Those are the most vulnerable users, and we don't want them crossing in front of vehicles and 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 um, imposing that that they will have to cross in front of vehicles, even if or if they're a visitor and they're they're visiting someone, they have to cross, even if it's not the person who lives there, um, to take away that uh, the parking in front of those um, those residences. Uh, could have a detrimental impact on the, the safety of the, the pedestrians. So we're trying to balance the pedestrians, the bikes, and the vehicles, all the users of the street. So thank you, Steve. Can you pick the next call, please? The next person in the queue is Deb Hoskins. Uh, Deb, your mic microphone has been unmuted. You can state your name for the record if you so choose, and then ask your question or make your comment. 
Hi, uh, this is Deborah Hoskins. I live just off of Junior Street, off of Fourth, and we frequently. I'm I'm delighted you're putting more bike lanes in because we ride over to Safeway frequently, and interestingly, we end up taking the uh, pathway that you have marked out for bike lanes in the in the neighborhoods. Um, so I would I'm really Please, that there's going to be more bike lanes on Fourth Street up to that point because that will that will be very helpful. The other is, and this does not have to do with um, the striping, but a little while back you all put in an uh, crosswalk lights at Junior and Fourth Street there where the Foster Freeze is, which I much appreciate. But they don't hang out over the uh, street. Uh, so this would be for the future. I understand your, your uh, parameters for the monies you have right now, but I just wanted to comment. We frequently, almost daily, cross that street. And uh, when people are traveling west on 4th Street in the evening, which is late afternoon evening, we often are crossing there to go for a walk and they cannot easily see the flashing light on the side of the street and it's quite dangerous. You have to you have to really wait for everybody to pretty much stop before you venture out. We've had one person almost run over us because they just, I'm sure they didn't see the flashing light as they were heading west into the sun. So if there's any way to make that more visible, um, that would be greatly appreciated uh, as the crosswalk is a little bit further west there by the uh, copy shop where they have the overhead arm that comes out, something like that would be appreciated. But but in general, thank you so much for more bike lanes. They're very much appreciated. Thank you. Next, Steve. Okay, uh, the next person in the queue is Alexa Forrest. Um, it looks abbreviated, so Alexa. Um, your your microphone has been unmuted. You may state your name for the record if you so choose and then ask your question or make a comment. Hi, thanks Stephen and thank you Rob for this presentation. My name is Alexa Forrester. Um, I am a bike commuter and I use my bike for transportation through all of these areas very frequently. And I just want to echo Deb's enthusiasm for many of the proposed changes that will be very beneficial to me and my family. And I do have a few comments. The first is um, just because Deb was mentioning that crossing there at Foster's Freeze, I am often riding my bike from the junior college back to my house in Montgomery Village. And that crossing, trying to figure out how to get from the, or the uh, McDonald neighborhood across 4th Street always just feels like I'm taking my life in my hands. And sometimes I get off my bike and walk across a crosswalk or try to sink it with pedestrians, but especially in the setting sun, as she mentioned. So if we could have a bike bag button at that crosswalk as well, that would be super helpful. Again, long-term. Um, uh, the other thing I wanted to say is that I very much support parking protected bike lanes wherever they are feasible, especially in the portions that are closer to downtown where there are more businesses. And as a cyclist, one of the things that um, I am always very cognizant of is being doored. And so I do not feel very comfortable riding in buffered bike lanes next to parked cars. Um, but that's especially true in business districts where the cars are coming and going and people are getting out more frequently. I ride by parked cars on like um, Hoenn Drive and I'm not as worried about that because there's not as much coming and going. Um, so the other thing I wanted to say is that I highly support raised cycle tracks where essentially the sidewalk is widened and the, uh, the bicycle lane be, shares the sidewalk with the pedestrians, but it's much wider. Um, I know that that's out of the scope of this project, but if you build the parking protected bike lanes temporarily um, with paint, then in future iterations, they're already in the right place for the raised cycle tracks. The other thing that I really wanted to comment on 
was this uh, route to get to the Safeway. Um, I'm happy for Deb that it's where she already rides, but I will mention that I'm coming from the Montgomery Village area and that route adds 1.5 miles to my commute from my house to the Safeway. I just did a mapping of it. If I drive my car, it's a mile. If I ride my bike, it's two and a half miles. And that's just not a good way to, because I'm coming from the east of the fourth and farmers intersection, mm -hmm. that's adding a lot. So long-term, I believe this is in the, the uh, bike and pedestrian master plan, but I'm going to keep mentioning it on every call. The short road south of the, um, the Safeway parking lot on the other side of the street dead ends right into that intersection at the corner of that shopping mall. And if we built a bicycle and pedestrian crossing across Santa Rosa Creek from the dead end of short road over to the, the east or the west side of that shopping center, it would create a short, convenient and very safe route for everybody south of 4th Street to access that shopping district. And I would use that all the time. Um, yeah, so those are my comments for now. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you, Alexa. Um, I will comment that that is that bridge is actually in our um, Creek master plan. So that is it has been identified. Um, I don't think there is a current funding for it, but it, it, the, it has been identified. So someone has seen what you have seen. Um, and I, I took your other comments on the, the beg button and a, a better way to, that's one of some of the fine tuning that we're looking at actually is, is the intersection, I believe at Talbot um, and how, how to improve that intersection to link to the McDonald area, um, whether it would be a, a hawk signal or something to help to make that connection um, between the two neighborhoods along there um, more, more viable. Um, so that's something that, like you mentioned, is not part of this project, but is something that we are are looking at to improve um, following this project. Um, the other thing I did want to mention is, and it, I I didn't mention it with Deb's comments, but um, you both brought up just the visibility of uh, the the lights. Um, another thing that will be helpful with the, and I think you might know this already, but with the the three lanes versus the four lanes, is you only need really one person to stop before you need to cross the street in one direction. You don't have the multi-threat where you have one person who stops and the other car might come around them and, and not see why they're stopping and continue. And if they're blocking that light that's on when they stop, um, they, they may do that. They may go around and, and continue on and not know that someone's in a crosswalk. So by having the single lane in each direction, that helps uh, dramatically reduce those types of collisions. So that's another benefit for the, the road diet there. All right, Steve, next call. Mm -hmm. The next person in our queue is David Long. David, your microphone has been unmuted. You can state your name for the record if you so choose and then ask your question or make your comment. Great, uh, my name is David Long. Uh, Rob, thank you so much for a succinct and clear presentation. Um, I live in the Proctor Heights neighborhood and I regularly use the 4th Street corridor, both with the uh, car and bicycle to go downtown and to access the 101 highway. Um, I really enthusiastically support the road diet in that stretch between uh, college and uh, Bryden. And, you know, I, I've traveled that stretch for many, many years. And so the left turn thing with the center left turn lane is really going to help. But I'm wondering if in addition to that, there could be some turn movement limiting done at the acute intersections where St. Helena and 13th hit 4th Street and Spring and 12th hit 4th Street. And I'm not really sure what those you know, limitations would be, but giving people all of the options to turn either left or right at those four intersections coupled with a single travel lane in each direction and people waiting in a center lane. It just seems like a recipe for uh, more accidents. And so maybe limiting people to only turning right or, or something like that. So um, has that been thought of 
along with this plan? So, um, no, we're, we we haven't thought of restricting left turns there. Um, there, aren't, there aren't left turns restricted there currently, so we weren't imposing on, on changing the travel patterns necessarily, but facilitating actually the the safety aspect of it by giving someone a place to stage to turn left. So what currently happens now is, you know, someone is staged there to turn left. Um, they could have a car behind them make moves to go around them while they're waiting to turn left or rear end them if they don't know understand that they're waiting there to turn left. So this this removes them um, right. from the travel lane. So but I'm not uh, talking about the people turning off of Fourth Street. I'm more thinking about the people coming on to Fourth Street. I see. I see. So this also gives an opportunity for people to merge into the center turn lane and then continue if they're making a left turn and then continue oh, yeah, their okay. movement. Right. So it's it's more of a two staged um, approach. So it may be actually easier to actually you're only looking for basically one gap in one direction when you're doing that. So it, it may I, I don't know. I don't think that it would be necessarily an issue. OK, I mean, that's good to think about using that tenor, center turn lane when you're coming out. It just after many, many tries of doing both of those movements there, those acute angles are, are really uh, a wonky situation for people to negotiate. And maybe with just one travel lane, each direction will get better. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, David. OK, sure. OK. The next person in the queue is Dixon uh, Delzel. Uh, Dixon, your microphone has uh, been unmuted. You can state your name for the record if you so choose and then ask your question or make a comment. I believe you're muted still, Dixon. Excuse me, thank you, Rob. Uh, Rob, I want to say this is Dixon Delzell. I live on the southeast corner of Montgomery and Alderbrook, so the very westward edge of the study area along Montgomery Drive, and I've lived here for 20 years. Um, by way of bona fides, I was staffed to the Solano Transportation Authority, staffed to the Placer Transportation Authority, and staffed to the Placer County Regional Transportation Agency was also included Lake Tahoe. So I have a certain eye to look at this neighborhood that I've lived in in 20 years. Um, I want to thank you, Rob, for sending Shane out also to speak to me. That was very proactive on the part of the city to send someone out to actually knock on my door and talk to me. I just want to thank you for that. I'd like to make a comment regarding uh, the uh, comment about people along the corridor actually having to park in their driveways as opposed to on the street. Keep in mind, this is a very particular neighborhood. This neighborhood was developed in 1947, 1948, 1949. The majority of the houses along Alderbrook to Forest Street are single car garages with single car driveways. The setbacks are also very limited um, to minimum. So at best you can park a single car garage um, in your driveways. Also, there's a high percentage of rentals. So we know that that increases the occupancy and also increases the vehicles and the demand for parking along this stretch of Montgomery Drive. I just wanted to get that into the conversation. One of the very first statements that you make um, that the city has made about the steady area is the narrowness of the streets. And with relationship to parking and vehicles being broadsided. So let's really drive that home and understand what that means. When you are traveling eastbound on Montgomery and you get to the Alderbrook intersection and you cross the Alderbrook intersection, Montgomery is reduced in size by 20 feet. That is two of your standard travel lanes. That's a dramatic effect. It creates a funnel effect. And it's more the funnel effect that has had vehicles get broadsided than the actual travel lane width and the parking situations. When you, on, on the westbound side of um, Alderbrook, you have parking, bicycle, travel lane, center multiple turn lane, mm -hmm. traffic lane, 
bicycle again and parking. You've got everything you'd ever want in your smorgasbord of, of vehicular travel for across all modes. The Alderbrook intersection traveling eastbound is only 38 or 40 feet wide in there. It's actually 38 feet on the, on the south side curb to curb. If someone is actually traveling at 30 miles an hour, they cross the intersection of Montgomery and Alderbrook in about three quarters of a second. And in that three quarters of a second, you are funneled down by 20 feet, 10 feet on both sides. With the current configuration with your center parking lane, at least you have consistency as people are funneled across the intersection. You maintain your center a multi-turn lane and you maintain your two travel lanes and you maintain your parking lanes. I can't imagine what it's gonna be like traveling across that intersection, the 38 feet with a completely different configuration taking place where you have parking, bicycling and the elimination of your center turn lane. You think there's problems now? I can only imagine it getting worse. I am unable to park directly in front of my house because the curb is painted red because of, of that funnel effect. I found it necessary for the 20 years that I've lived here to back into my driveway. It is far, far safer for me to back into my driveway than it is for me to back out in traffic a mere 40 feet from the Alderbrook intersection, which means that <clears throat> I've been sitting in front of my house waiting to be able to turn into the center turn lane so that I can back into my driveway safely for 20 years. If you calculate that I did that once a day for all those years, it's about 300 hours. I've got a lot of time sitting at the intersection of Alderbrook and Montgomery Drive looking at what goes on. Mm -hmm. People come around the intersection from Alderbrook, making the right-hand turn eastbound onto Montgomery Drive without even looking in the it, 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 at the oncoming traffic. They're often making the S turn to uh, come briefly onto Montgomery and slide over onto, onto Sherwood or to continue on up the street. You know, it is, I guess my point is this is a really special little neighborhood and I'm, I'm questioning the entire value of even putting bicycle lanes there. This sounds way more like a bicycle plan than, than, than really anything else. And you've got really underdeveloped bicycle lanes on Sonoma Avenue. I'm a bicyclist. I got two bicycles and two e-bikes sitting in my garage. I'm not anti-bicycle. This is a very, very narrow strip of property by your of roadway by your own admissions. I think that it's really important to look at the safety value of that center turn lane. When you only have two lanes of traffic without a center turn lane in here, what are you going to do when you have your trash pickup that happens with, with a, you know, once a week, when you have emergency vehicles traveling down, it was stated in your plan, <clears throat> someone stated, well, it's a good idea to remove the center traffic lane because it will cause traffic to stop while people are making left-hand turns into their driveways or left-hand turns into any one of the five streets. You know what, that's congestion. That's not slowing down traffic. If your interest is in slowing down traffic from Alderbrook to Farmers, all that you need to do is stripe for parking. You know that striping for parking, just like you've done on the side streets, like you've done on Alderbrook and Rosedale and Talbot, creates an optical illusion. It makes people think the streets are more narrow and they slow down. That will alert people uh, that are driving through, so you don't have to worry about the parking taking place and, the, and being sideswiped. It will slow people down in terms of their vehicular travel, and it actually can double as a bike lane because there's not much parking there during the day. It's a two-fold solution without eliminating parking or installing bicycle lanes whose utility has to be questioned. And I would like to see some documentation about the validity of the necessity of bike lanes on this section of Montgomery Drive, other than it completes the bicycle map. I think that concludes right. my comments. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Dixon. I appreciate your input. Um, and we don't have a time clock tonight, um, but I would like to, I mean, that was quite a, quite a lengthy discussion. And if we, if you have 
ex, you know, exceptionally lengthy discussions you'd like to have with me, I am more than happy to have conversations with you on the telephone and I, I will present my information or the email. I'll, I will present my information um, at the end of this presentation, at the end of the slides. So you could write that down and contact me as well. Um, I do appreciate the information that you provided, Dixon, so thank you for that. Um, and I understand exactly what you're saying. So we we are looking at that section of road specifically um, to come up with a design that will that will be beneficial for cyclists and for the vehicles. Uh, our intent is absolutely not to make things um, worse than they are today. Our intent is to make them better. Obviously, I mean, so um, and even even saying that this is striping striping can be changed if we do make a mistake or if we if we do something that doesn't work as well as we think it should it can always be modified so it's it's not it, it's not something that will be you know it's not cast in stone forever necessarily so steve can we go on to the next caller please we can thank you next person in the queue is stephen maples uh stephen your microphone has been unmuted. You can state your name for the record if you so choose, and then ask your question or make a comment. Yeah, thank you, Stephen and Rob. This is um, really exciting to see um, some of the proposed changes to Montgomery Drive. Uh, my name is Stephen Maples. My wife and I are residents and homeowners on Montgomery Drive near the intersection of Short Road, so within the project area. Um, I'm an avid bicyclist and I really support the implementation of a protected bike lane on Montgomery Drive, um, as well as additional traffic calming infrastructure and pedestrian safety measures to help reduce vehicle speeds and increase pedestrian and bicyclist safety on Montgomery. And based on the current project timeline, it sounds like the protected bike lanes are the only thing that's being considered right now. But based on what I see every day, the parking on Montgomery and especially on the north side is really underutilized. So I just took a peek out my front window right now and I don't see any vehicles parked on the two blocks between Short and Yates on the north side of Montgomery. So where we live, you know, Montgomery Drive is a three quarter mile straight shot between Farmers Lane and the hospital, cuts through our neighborhood and allows drivers to speed ex excessively past many homes, a church, a preschool and a hospital. And I think the best way to increase safety for folks parking on the south side of Montgomery and crossing the street would be to reduce uh, vehicle speeds, increase enforcement of speed limits, and implement other traffic calming and pedestrian safety measures. I think this would greatly improve the safety both for bicyclists and pedestrians, not to mention just increasing safety generally for folks in cars um, and folks that live along Montgomery Drive and make this whole corridor much more welcoming for folks um, so with that, I'll conclude my comments. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. And yeah, the section between, uh, I think, Jean Drive and Gilbert was a section that we were thinking of that maybe we could do kind of a hybrid approach potentially. And, and, and that section, that section of road has only side on, has mainly side on housing, house access. And they also have the um the interior of the neighborhood um, because they're corner homes so those may be areas that that segment may be a segment that we could install the buffered bike lanes um with with limited impact on on the residents it's more the section between short and alderbrook i think or or yes short and alderbrook that we'd be concerned about that but thank you for your comments definitely appreciate those okay steve next mm -hmm. The next person in the queue is Janice Oakley. Janice, your microphone has been unmuted. You may state your name for the record if you so choose and then ask your question or make a comment. Thank you. And uh, yeah, thank you for the presentation and the opportunity to comment. I live on Sh Sherwood Drive, which is between 4th Street and Montgomery in the area that we've been talking about. I, I am a bicyclist for commuting and to the point that some people don't know that I own a car. Um, so one of the proposal, well, in general, I support the um, 
the proposed projects. Um, one question I have, because it's been brought up by a couple of the respondents in various community meetings is having um, the buffered bike lanes with parked cars in them. And I wanted to know about, and you may not have that answer and that's because it's not even part of these um, proposals, but what would uh, garbage pickup look like? Where would the garbage cans be? How would the trash and recycling get picked up? And also about like street sweeping. Um, there's a lot of glass that's already out on the roads. So would having a buffered um, bike lane, would that um, end up having the trash cans in the bike lanes? And then how would um, bicyclists have to maneuver around that? So that's one of my concerns with the, um, the proposals that I've heard about um, having the protected buffers containing um, park cars. So you may not have that answer, but um, so that would think, be something oh, I'd be interested in if, you know, as these discussions progress. Thanks. Go ahead, Rob. So you see it. So when you, and don't mute her yet, please. Um, so I just want to get some clarification on when you're saying, so a buffer bike lane is a bike lane, then it has a small buffer area between the car and the, and the bike lane itself. Trash should be placed at the curb. So it should be not be placed in the bike lane, period. I know people do, and I'm sure a lot of people on here are, you know, commenting to themselves right now, but, and I, I've seen it myself because I ride a bike too. Uh, people do put their, their garbage can, especially like on Hohen into the bike lane because parking is so, um, so much is, is used so much, there isn't that much curb space. So that's an issue regardless if there's a bike lane striped or not. Um, that the that the garbage can encroaches out into uh in, from the, from the curb um the and i think your question was if we we did put the parking and flip flopped it with the bike lane then how would garbage pickup occur and at that point we would ask the 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 residents or the businesses to put the garbage can in the parking area, which would not be blocking the bike lane, not against the curb. So it's still in a parking area. Um, so not to disrupt the, the flow of the bike lanes. But one of the things we, that you did mention was street sweeping. And that is something that we have to consider on how we are going to street sweep areas that have these protected bike lanes. And because a street sweeper um, needs, I believe, about nine to 10 feet to get into um, the area that needs to be swept. And so in our proposal, I believe we have nine feet um, for the uh, protected bike lane that's on 4th Street in the section between E and Brookwood to, so that we can maintain some level of street sweeping in that section. Um, so that is something that we do have to consider when we're looking at installing uh, protected bike lanes if we do flop them with, uh, with parking. The other option is to prohibit parking during certain days that they, they, they do the street sweeping so that you have full access to those to those areas. Great. Did I answer your, did I answer your yes, question? Yes, you did. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, thanks, Jim. That was really helpful. All right, Steve, next. Okay, the next person in our queue is uh, Francine Gara. Uh, Francine, your microphone has been unmuted and you can state your name for the record if you so choose, then ask your question or make a comment. Hi, my name is Francine Gara. Um, I have lived on Montgomery Drive, just, um, just west of Farmer's Lane for um, 17, over 17 years. I uh, have, a, a dog. I walk in this neighborhood every morning and uh, I'm often, uh, you know, having to walk around pickup trucks that park on the sidewalk. My neighbor has decided to pave over his front lawn and park his pickup trucks on the front lawn so that they don't get hit by cars whizzing by our front, our uh, Montgomery Drive on um, because they drive so fast, they just 
uh, hit off side mirrors or one of his trucks was actually completely totaled um, by a uh, hit and run driver. Um, we do have a business on the corner of Farmers and, um, and Montgomery Drive that has employees that can't park in the parking lot. So that for the most, is the most parking that we have uh, on um, the street during the day from the employees who park along, and basically they've been parking along the north side of the street. Other than that, they don't. Uh, we have very few uh, on-street parkers unless someone has uh, an excessive number of vehicles. Uh, there was one caller who uh, stated that we do have small driveways and um you know if you have more than one vehicle it's it's um it's sometimes hard to keep your uh all of your vehicles in the driveway or the um or the garage uh what i i really appreciate the uh expansion of montgomery drive i have championed this for years because of numerous um, circumstances. We have a lot of bicyclists who ride on the sidewalks. When you're backing out of your driveway, uh, that is a very dangerous situation. You look right, you look left, you look again, and all of a sudden, boom, there's a bike bicyclist there who is riding on the sidewalk, very dangerous, and it happens almost every morning. Uh, the other one is the very fast drivers um, on Montgomery Drive. I don't care if there's a center turn lane. I don't care if it's a narrow road. These people drive fast. It's an, a through, through way and they drive like it's 101. Um, so pedestrians like myself and my dog are always in danger crossing the street. So an added crosswalk at shore is always very appreciated. Um, I just wanted to say thank you um, for listening to me. Uh, I do champion getting that center turn lane taken out. The, the narrow roadway has never been a good idea. It has never worked. And I think uh, it is definitely time for a change to get bicycle lanes and um, wider roadway so people can actually park on, their, uh, uh, on the street. Thank you so much. Great, thank you. Okay, Steve, next. The uh, next uh, next person in the queue is Anid Myers. Uh, Anid, your microphone has been unmuted. You may state your name for the record if you so choose and uh, ask your question or make your comment. Uh, my name is Marcus Myers. Enid is my wife. Um, we're on her computer. Thank you so much. Um, you know, the concern that we've had since the whole, oh, I'm sorry. And we are also residents. Uh, we live right up the street from Dixon, hey Dixon, and down the street from David, who's on uh, Montgomery. And since the proposals first came out, and we have lived in this house coming on 14 years, we have watched the flow of traffic increase. And as Dixon had pointed out, this is a an older neighborhood and the uh, driveways are very narrow. They barely fit a single car. And eliminating or adding a parking lane and a buffered bike lane, not only is it increase the danger to both the bicyclists and the vehicles that are parked on the road already. I am the victim. I've lost uh, two cars here, uh, completely totaled by speeding drivers being funneled off of uh, at Alderbrook on the Montgomery Lane. Our neighbor um, to the right of us has lost his vehicle as well. It was totaled uh, with people speeding down this lane. The biggest concern that we have uh, is the speed, um, you know, and the parking. And Sonoma has such a wider street um, for bikes lanes, and not just for them to have to detour that way, but just for safety reasons. Um, I am I too like Dixon back into my driveway because trying to pull out on the Montgomery Drive um, in reverse is just horrific. Um, the center turn lane. I mean, this week alone, I've known that we've had this seminar coming up. I have seen people passing cars in front of my house here 
on Montgomery Lane because that person was following the speed limit. We only have two speed limit signs posted in this area and our speed limit here is 30 miles an hour, which no one does on this street. Um, so I, I think eliminating the, uh, the buffered bike lane only due to safety reasons and concerns for bicyclists should be of the utmost importance. Um, the center lane, it doesn't matter if we're trying to use that center lane to turn or back into, I mean, we have to back into the center lane if we're backing out of our driveway for safety reasons to get into the flow of traffic. A, that uh, gets other drivers who are traveling either east or westbound, hypercritical of what's happening. Uh, they're slamming on their brakes or they're not actually understanding what it is that we're doing, trying to get of our, out of our own um, driveway. Uh, I was glad that Dixon uh, pointed that out. I'm glad that David talked about the speeding, I mean, um, up the street, but the speeding on, on our, our section of road between Farmers Lane and Alderbrook is just, it's absurd. Uh, we don't have enough police presence here to monitor the speed. I've never seen any ticketing going on in here. Um, and it's just, uh, it's a very unsafe section of road. Uh, even though trash cans are placed on the sidewalks, uh, it's still a very narrow, narrow street. I think Dixon said it was by 20 feet from Alderbrook uh, west eastbound. So our concern is uh, is safety. Um, I'm not really concerned with parking. Uh, I'm concerned with people's safety, and I'm concerned with the speed. And we appreciate you guys putting out this proposal and making some uh, recommendations for it and to see where that goes. But I think that in the overall picture, no matter what you do, you really need to think about the speed limit that's posted between here and what we can do to, to bring that down. The other lady was speaking who's west of Farmer Lane uh, is the same thing. You know, it's narrow and then it widens up. And Sonoma Avenue is just much more safer for, for bicyclists, uh, in, in my opinion. So we appreciate your time. Thank you very much for having us. I have one question for you, um, uh, Marcus. Um, did, so you mentioned, you, the, I think you said you didn't care about parking on, I think you're talking about on street. You didn't, you don't necessarily use the on street parking, but you do, but you do use the center turn lane for access to your driveway. We Well, we have to with the flow of traffic. If we were trying to turn into our driveway from just the street, uh, and, you know, that's, these are small driveways and some are tight. We've actually widened our driveway so that we could eliminate some of the, the issues that most of those these folks have with the single mm -hmm. car garages is that, you know, you still have to swing left a little bit to get into your driveway and center lane people just fly right down it and pass us, you know, so mm -hmm. I, I'm not sure if eliminating the center lane is the best scenario for this whole proposition. Um, yeah, you. I mean, so you would have a better turning radius um, turning into your driveway with the bike lane there because it's actually pushing you further into the middle of the street. Right. You would not have people passing you potentially because there wouldn't be a center turn lane for that to occur. Well, that's so, correct. So there's pluses yeah. and minuses, right? So there's pluses and minuses. And, and on the buffered bike lane, uh, I think it was Deb with the coalition earlier. I mean, the more protection a bicyclist gets from this stretch of road, I mean, pushing them farther into the road, even with a buffered bike lane. I mean, I mean, uh, you've got to actually live here to experience what it is that those of us that live here are trying to explain to you about how dangerous it is and how how um, speed speed is the main thing, especially like Dixon pointed out, we're 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 losing 20 feet of road when you cross Alderbrook into and you're being funneled mm -hmm. into this portion of Montgomery Drive. Right. Yeah, I, uh, I, so, I definitely get and, and it. I know and, you know that. You and know and that. part of, yeah, and, and part of, uh, you know, our our design is to actually do some of what Dixon was, was mentioning. It's actually putting the lines on the road for a 10-foot lane, which is very narrow for people to navigate, um, which does help with, which should help with speed. Um, and, it's, and it's pushing them closer to, basically also closer to the oncoming traffic. So the perception of the, the drivers on Montgomery Drive with the proposed layout is going to be much different than it is today when you are separated from the other oncoming vehicle that's that's moving. It's going to, it would be quite a, uh, quite a bit different um, experience. So 
even even if that's done and you're giving us a, a little bit more uh, space to make those turns, um, it's not going to eliminate the driver that's in a big hurry to get to McDonald's or wherever he's got to get to that's going to be still passing us on the left into oncoming traffic because uh, I don't know how to put this. There's there's no... <laughs> we can't control people who exactly. are... Well, you can't control, we can control, we can control speeding. We can, you know, ticketing. Uh, yeah, I know yes. we're never going to get a speed bump on the street because of the hospital, but I mean, Marsh Road, Marsh Road is a, a residential neighborhood that has speed humps in it because people speed up and down the street, you know, and we see way more traffic than Marsh Road. Um, and so it's just, you know, I'm all for anything that's going to increase safety. Absolutely. But this stretch of road safety uh, and, and widening that and putting those lanes there isn't going to change much for the um, the safety of everybody with the way people drive here. I mean, and I think you've heard that from most of us on online tonight, but, you know, we're interested to see what you guys come up with and, and see, you know, um, what happens. Great. Thank you, Marcus. Thank you. So we still, we still have several hands raised. So I want to remind people um, if you have succinct comments, that would be great if they're just, Yes, we like it. That's great. Um, keep it con concise. If you have if you have specific issues, bring those to the forefront so we can help address them and and make sure we get everyone's input tonight. So we still have several several hands up. So thank you. Go ahead, Steve. Mm -hmm. The next person in the queue is Tom Helm. Tom, your um, your microphone's been unmuted. You can state your name for the record if you so choose. Then ask your question or make a comment. Hi, I'm Tom Helm. I been riding my bike around town a long time. I thank you, Rob and the city, for your um, gathering input from the citizens and responding with designs. I, I used to ride down 4th Street to get from Farmer's Lane to Bryden Lane. And it takes a little hutzpah to do that. You have to just take the lane. There's nowhere else to go. And it was okay because, well, it was two lanes in one direction and they could always go around me. I don't do that so much because I kind of like the idea that Rob suggested, well, just go down Montgomery. It's a lot less traffic. And it is, it's a lot less traffic. Uh, but now I hear that from the comments that even Montgomery has problems, design problems to try. You can't solve it all. Um, so, but what I would really like to focus on is the alternative route to get to Safeway using Geary and Morley or Rogers Way. And if you can pull that slide up, I, I won't take too long. Shelly, can you go back about four or five slides? One more. There, there we go. go. There, there we go. go. Thank you. Okay. Uh, in my route to get from Montgomery Village to, say, Kaiser on Mendocino, I would never take these things, but I can see the benefit for people who say, oh, no, I'm not going to be on 4th Street, and there isn't much of an option. How are you going to sign that to make it clear? It's, it's very convoluted to... Uh, to anybody who wants to go th in, uh, through the district. Um, and uh, that's one, one issue. And the other issue is this gets you to Rogers Way at the edge of the Safeway Shopping Center. It doesn't get you to Farmer's Lane. And I don't know if it's just unspoken, but you're kind of expecting people to go through the Safeway parking lot to get to Farmer's Lane. And the other, Part of the issue, which isn't solved, is people from Montgomery Village, how do they get to Safeway? Well, they would go up Farmer's Lane, which is a pretty busy street, and get in the left turn lane like all the cars and get to Safeway that way. That is not incorporated in your plan. So I'm saying that the designs are improvements, 
but there are things that they don't address. I'm sorry, I can't have any, I don't have any answers for you. I just want to point out those two things. The circumnavigation route is too complicated. And how do you get to Safeway from the east side? Thank you very much for your Great. work. Thanks, Tom. Um, so we do plan to put up wayfinding signs um, for a bike route to and from the Safeway. Um, the other point I'll make it, we didn't do a study on on Highway 12 Farmers Lane. That was not part of our corridor study at this time, so we weren't addressing that road. And specifically, we actually don't have a jurisdiction over Highway 12. That's Caltrans's jurisdiction. And my understanding is that they don't have, they don't intend to put bike lanes on um, on Farmers Lane Highway 12. The other piece is that as part of as part of our, it, there aren't any other bike lanes. I don't believe further east, I think it's just shoulder further east on um, Sonoma Highway. Um, so our our stopping point was the destination of the Safeway Shopping Center. And it it did not include going going south on Farmers Lane. So strictly just related to the, the fourth street. Um, I think I addressed both of those questions, Tom. So next caller, please. The next person in the queue is Monona Heveland. Monona, your um, microphone has been unmuted. You can state your name for the record if you so choose, and then ask your question or make a comment. Hello, my name is Monona Heveland. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, I am very excited to see this project coming forward, and I, um, I just can't wait to see the um, road diet on 4th Street and bike lanes there. I think it's going to be such a great improvement. Um, I just wanted to comment that the way I live in the um, McDonald neighborhood area and I bike over to Sonoma Avenue and directions over there. And I, I usually go on 13th Street and then cross at by the Foster's Breeze and then go down fourth street for just one little tiny block and it's usually pretty frightening and then <laughs> go on to Talbot and so I just wanted to encourage the improvement of that crossing going south from 13th street um, over to Talbot and then north from Talbot over to St. Helena or 13th street um, as a, a, a route and I've heard the other cyclists use it also um and then the um the other thing i'm also excited about the bike lanes on montgomery i would definitely use them when i'm going a lot of times when i'm going to the uh, east i'm trying to get to the brush creek bike trail and so um going on talbot to montgomery over to yalupa will get uh, cyclist to the Brush Creek Trail. And so um, I just wanted to make sure, I know in your restriping doesn't really show the intersections. So I'm always concerned about the um, intersections. So I just wanted to, um, I know there isn't much time here, but just make sure that there's thought at the intersection at Farmer's Lane and um, also at Brookwood, at those big intersections, it's always a little bit, um, uh, challenging to get through as a cyclist. Um, so whatever can be done to improve it. And then um, the uh, last, I, I appreciate the comments of the gentleman that lives on Montgomery about the speed of vehicles because it is still concerning when there is a bike lane on that new bike lane striped in the section of Montgomery. Unless there's something done to control speeds, it still will be a little precarious for um, young for cyclists, um, particularly young cyclists and families. If the vehicles are traveling at 40 miles per hour, you know, at 30, 40, something like that, that it's um, not there. There are safety concerns. So. Um, I just wanted to, I know that the thought is, well, there's nothing can be done about speeding, but I think that it would be um, beneficial for the city to think about um, maybe education and outreach and more signage 
to reduce vehicular speeds wherever uh, bike lanes are or pedestrians are because you say, oh, well, you don't want anyone to cross the street because it's dangerous. Well, sometimes people have to cross the street and it wouldn't be as dangerous if vehicles were not traveling so fast. If they were at the speed limit of 30 or maybe even lowering the speed limit to 20 or 25. And if there was more enforcement and outreach around lowering vehicular speed limits, wherever you're doing improvements for bicyclists and pedestrians, it would really be um, beneficial to all the residents, everybody who lives on those streets and everybody who's traveling outside of a car. So um, those are my comments and I look forward to seeing the improvements. Thank you Great. very much. Thank you, Manona. Um, so I did just want to call it the 13th Street. Yes, that is a location that we have been um, looking at. And intersections in general do get a lot of our attention when we're doing the designs. We need to make sure that the bike lanes are lining up, the, the travel lanes are lining up, that we're um, not dropping the bike lanes. We're focusing on really trying not to do that because we understand what a how complex that is for cyclists when you're approaching intersection then all of a sudden there's not a bike lane that's not helpful we get it um so thank you for those comments and um i i don't think i said nothing can be done on about speeding we do we absolutely are talking with our police department when we do these designs to narrow the lanes we are attempting to help people help remind them and make it um you know, more difficult to go speed uh, a faster speed if you had a 14 foot travel lane versus a 10 foot travel lane. That is a huge difference. And the perception is um, that you're going faster if the lane is narrower. So we are attempting to help address the speeds. Uh, next caller, Steve, please. Mm -hmm. The next person in the queue is Jim Maz. Jim, your microphone's been unmuted. Uh, you can state your name for the record if you so choose and then ask your question or make your comment. Jim, you're still muted. Okay. Hi. Can you hear me now? Yes. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Sorry, we had two devices going. Um, I'm Sandy Mazza. I'm Jim's wife. I live on California Avenue, very close to Montgomery, and I've lived here for 34 years. And I'm at the point where California, although this is one block west of the area that you're talking about, California is where Montgomery widens. And um, I just wanted to say that Montgomery is a very narrow street and Sonoma is a much wider street. And I think that um, this proposal for um, Montgomery might be trying to do too many things. My major concern is that if you remove the center lane turning lane, that you will back up traffic in both directions all day long. There's a lot of neighborhood feeder streets that people are coming both east and west to turn into. And if they have to wait for the traffic to clear in the oncoming direction, they're gonna back up everything behind them while they wait for a clearance. And that's one of the benefits that Montgomery has is this center turning lane. And I hadn't heard any other comments about that. So I wanted to address that. Um, I'm all for the types of improvements that you're making, but I propose that you move that all over to Sonoma Avenue where you have a lot more street real estate to work with. And it's a very short black block from, the, from Sonoma Avenue to Montgomery. And um, there, were, there were two other speaker, speakers, Dixon and uh, a husband who spoke on his wife's um, computer that I think made some really good points about um, people need to be able to park on Montgomery on the side of the street that they live in. Otherwise, people are going to be running across the street, not going to an intersection, they're late for work, the kids got to get to daycare, what have you. Um, so I think their parking needs to be preserved on both sides of the street. And um, I, I think the center lane, their turning lane needs to be preserved. Thank you. Great, thank you, Sandy. Okay, the next person in the queue is Carmen Huddleston. 
Carmen, your mic has been unmuted. Uh, you may state your name for the record if you so choose and then ask your question or make your comment. Um, uh, yes, my name is Carmen Huddleston and um, thank you for the presentation this evening. Um, I'm not a cyclist, I'm a pedestrian. So I, and I, I live in the Sherwood Forest area, so I'm walking these streets all the time. And I just want to reiterate what other uh, speakers have said is um, between college and Brighton, the traffic is very, very fast. And I have tried to cross at Alderbrook, which is impossible using the flasher. People just don't stop. Um, I don't even the flasher, it's just a marked walkway. And then further down at Talbot, where the flasher is, again, you, know, you press that button and cars just don't stop. I think they're just, whether they're going, you know, west or east, they're just in a rush and they, they don't stop. So slow down. So I'm wondering if there's going to be any plans for any kind of a stoplight between college and Brighton. And then my other um, comment I wanted to make, and I'm not sure if this was mentioned at the beginning, I was a few minutes late logging on. Um, at Brighton and Fourth, where um, Proctor Terrace Grammar School is right there. And um, if you've ever in that neighborhood at drop off time or primarily in the pickup in the afternoon, the, it backs up traffic onto Fourth Street sometimes because you know parents are trying to turn down to go to pick up their kids. Um, if they has that been considered in the, the redesign of that, are they going to design that change that intersection anyway so that there's going to be fewer lanes? I'm just wondering. That that's it. Those are my two comments. Great. Thank you, Carmen. Um, so no, the intersection actually at Brighton and um, Fourth will maintain the lanes that are currently there, just south or west of the intersection um, is where the transition will occur. So the intersection of Fourth and 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 Brighton will retain the same number of lanes. Um, and then your other question was: Is there any plans for a a traffic signal only on the segment of roadway? Currently, there's not, um, and one of the reasons is that we are getting very close to the the capacity of a road diet along that section of um, Fourth Street between Bryden and College. Um, we are so any type of um, traffic signal device along that segment that breaks the flow of the traffic there would potentially then back traffic up and then divert it into the neighborhood, which is something we're very cautious about and don't want to um, don't want to shift people into the neighborhood because they think they're going to be getting somewhere faster by going through the neighborhood versus staying on the, the arterial street, which it is. So currently we do not have any plans for, um, for a signal. And those are those two questions. Uh, Steve, next person, please. Next person in the queue is Andrew Rich. Andrew, your microphone's been unmuted. You can state your name for the record if you so choose and then make your comment or ask your question. Thanks and thank you for the time and your presentations. Um, I think generally the approach is taken of adding bike lanes where possible are good and positive. I think, however, that there should be more emphasis on protected bike lanes, whether that uh, be through some form of infrastructure or through uh, parked car protected bike lanes would be great. Um, I regularly ride my bike through the uh, Montgomery section west of Farmers, and it is a real gauntlet making it through there. Um, I think the proposed solution of having buffered bike lanes isn't adequate, and I think that you're doing that uh, with preference of the local homeowners on the north side of Montgomery. And given that there are, I'm sure, many more bicyclists passing through there, the kind of frequency of collisions for bicyclists is likely much higher than the number of people that are having to cross that section of Montgomery. So I think that it would be, if we're talking about safety, which seems to be people's uh, rationale for not including bike lanes and such that I think that the best best improvement of safety would be to remove that north side of parking. Um, I don't think that we need to give preference of people's uh, parking of their private um, vehicles on public property. I think that the uh, overall common good is, is, is more important here and I think that removing those northern 
bike lane or parked cars would be best. I also want to comment on the improvements to the east of Farmers Lane on Montgomery, and I that all, that area is also a real gauntlet, and I uh, am happy to see changes in that area. And um, I guess also I'd like to hear the res a response of um, I believe it was Chris Rogers in a meeting a couple months ago, he said that he wanted the kind of default to be protected bike lanes for downtown, for the downtown area. And I'm not really seeing that. It seems like we're really, um, if there's ever any excuse to make a bike lane not protected, then that excuse is used as reason to not have a bike lane protected. So uh, I appreciate the time and appreciate the ability to give my comment. Thank you. Thanks, Andrew. Yeah, we heard that comment too from Mr. Rogers. Um, from Mayor Rogers, and um, we did follow up with him on 4th Street specifically regarding um, the the evacuation route there, and that was the reason for um, not putting in protected bike lanes there. If you come to our uh, meeting on the November 16th, you will see um, a lot of locations that we're being able to put on North Dutton with protected bike lanes. So it's it's not something we're we're ignoring by any means it's something that we are trying to develop where we can and where we have uh the option to do so where we can continue to do the street sweeping um because we know that that's another issue um for cyclists is when the street doesn't get swept and the bike lane gets dirty and then it tires get popped and and that's another issue so there's a, there are definitely a lot of um different competing interests and we are uh we are incorporating the designs where we can. So thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, next, please. The next Steve. person in our queue is Sarah Jones. Sarah, your mic has been uh, unmuted. Uh, you can state your name for the record if you so choose and then ask your question or make a comment. Hi, this is Sarah Jones. Um, I am teach over at Santa Rosa Junior College and I live over in the Grace Tract. And so my comment was that, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so um, I would very much like to see a crosswalk um, at Geary and Bryden, uh, where you have that planned route going through there. I, I walk that way and I ride that way all the time. And um, it's a great path through this neighborhood. I actually ride through this neighborhood from Safeway that way all the time. And But it would be much safer if there was a crosswalk there. Okay. Um, the second thing is I often go over to Montgomery and I'm a very timid bike rider. I like riding on very slow streets. So I'm really excited about your bike lanes on Montgomery Avenue because I do think they will slow traffic considerably along that route. And the bike lanes will make it much safer for me to get from my home to um, uh, Rincon Valley. But more importantly, the bike lanes along that route um, will make it possible for my students who live in Rincon Valley to get to Santa Rosa Junior College um, on a safe, protected bike lane. So um, the more protected and the safer you can make them and the slower you can make those roads, the better for, for those bicyclists. I actually did walk by at one of my students who was fixing a flat tire today um, because it got popped. Um, and so keeping those bike lanes clean is really important. Um, and there is a protected bike lane on um, uh, Ridgeway. Ridgeway, thank you. There is a protected bike lane on Ridgeway that's not getting swept um, because uh, there's no way for the street sweepers to get in there because there's curbs between the, there's uh, parking things in the way. Mm -hmm. so the street sweepers can't get in there and nothing can get in there to clean that area. So um, I know that the junior college has smaller operating street sweeper things that uh, they use to clean our parking areas. I was wondering if maybe the city might be getting some of those to help clean those protected bikeways. I think that's all I needed to talk, comment on, but I, but I really am so excited to see all of these um, routes going through town and you're putting them in whenever you do the street slurries. And I just would highly recommend prioritizing, um, figuring out ways for people to get through town, like from Rincon Valley all the way to the junior college or from Bennett Valley all the way to the junior college. Um, 
those routes uh, are really important um, and we need to, as the city moves forward with their bike plans, um, Prior to prioritizing, making sure that there is a safe route for the timid bike riders, the bike riders that aren't going to get onto a busy street to get all the way to school. It would be really wonderful. Thank you. Great, thank you. We are looking into some other street sweeping options um, and for, for some of the narrow sections. However, we don't have that currently. So that's another reason why we, are hesitant in installing a lot of different uh, of the protected bike lanes when we don't have a, a means to to sweep them effectively. So, thank you for that, Steve. Next, next person to queue is Michael Lapelt. Michael, your microphone has been unmuted. You can state your name for the record if you so choose, and then ask your question or make your comment. Yeah, hi. Thanks, uh, Michael Lapelt. I live in the McDonald area. And I want to thank everybody for all the time and energy uh, put into these proposals. It's not a simple matter. I don't need to tell you that. It's always harder to retrofit than to start from scratch to uh, build out a livable city. So I encourage everything that you're doing to increase our bike networks so they connect, as our last speaker spoke about, so that we have strategic ways to get east and west to the downtown core and north and south, particularly up in Decino to the JC, the high school, and to the county area and to Kaiser. So that being said, I'm, I, I really uh, am supporting uh, protected bike lanes and parking protected bike lanes. Regarding street sweeping, every city that has those, uh, you know, the one day a month that you have street sweeping, they have signage that says that warns people not to park there. So that's the simple low cost solution for that. Uh, so proponent of that, and also for buff buffer bike lane, uh, you could use bollards uh, on the, traffic side of the buffered bike lanes that are removable that would add additional protection because as the last speaker spoke about, we need to encourage people of all ages and abilities, particularly when we're encouraging urban infill. If we don't have networks for bikes and cyclists to get to and from work to meet, to meet their daily needs, we're gonna have a horrendous traffic problem and the people that made comments on Montgomery, the best way to reduce the number of cars, particularly in the city limits, are to have more bike lanes. I find myself riding on sidewalks, particularly on the farmer's area from the Safeway shopping center because it's totally unsafe to ride on farmer's lane. So if we have more safe protected bike lanes, we wouldn't be riding on sidewalks why people do that. Um, and I totally agree with speed being an issue. When you have straight wide streets, uh, you're gonna have people traveling and being unaware of posted speed signs or just ignoring them in particular. And the last comment I wanna make is on Talbot. I often try and use that to get from McDonald area over to Montgomery or Sonoma Avenue using a, a separated bike phasing traffic signal would really be helpful. So you don't have to get off your bike, walk over 20 feet to a signal to trigger that, particularly when you have an e-bike that weighs 70 pounds, moving that around. So I applaud you for being visionary. We need to think of uh, getting more people out of vehicles and more people on bikes for our future and for our children. So thanks again for all the work you've done. Thanks, Michael. Next, please. The, uh, the next person in the queue is uh, Michael Klimek. Michael, your mic has been unmuted 
and you may state your uh, name for the record if you so choose, and then ask your question or make a comment. Hi, my name is Michael Klimek. Thanks for the great conversation. Um, I commute from east of Farmers Lane across either Sonoma Avenue or Montgomery Lane, typically. Um, the intersection across Farmers Lane is quite uh, challenging on either street. Uh, our kid attended these French American charter schools. So we tried to um, facilitate children commuting to school, but ultimately decided that the intersection was just too dangerous after too many close calls with uh, impatient drivers. Nonetheless, my comments um, are regarding Sonoma Avenue and Montgomery Lane in particular, following up on the comments about parking, turning into driveways and, and, and speeding, I am wondering if it is on the table to make Montgomery Lane westbound or eastbound and Sonoma Avenue uh, one-way street the opposite direction in order to facilitate more space for uh, bicycle traffic as well as uh, parking for the residents while making that a less attractive mode of transport so that there will be less speeding because people would, would prefer other streets for their you know, faster mode of transport. Also, I'm wondering whether you know, constricting 4th Street and um, slimming down car access on, on, on that street is going to actually uh, be counterproductive and create more high-speed traffic on Sonoma Avenue or Montgomery Lane. And I'm wondering whether that is considered. And lastly, I am wondering whether it is feasible for the creek to be expanded into having bike paths near it to get traffic, bicycle traffic completely off the road and protected, much like it is uh, east of Farmer's Lane uh, towards Mission, where there is a really nice bike path that contours the creek itself. I myself lived in Boulder, Colorado. A majority of our bike paths there are constructed around various waterways, and they only periodically cross onto the traffic. Uh, they're mostly protected, and that seems to work really well. And with that, I'll end my comment. Thank you, Michael. Um, we do. Um, we actually don't have plans, I don't think, for there's a segment of creek that does have a plan for a path. However, the segment between four farmers and um, say Talbot area, um, that's all privately owned. The creek is actually uh, there. The property lines, I believe, go to the center line of the creek in there. So we don't have any jurisdiction over that second segment of the right of the waterway to, to install paths. Although I, I think that's a, a great idea. Um, uh, let's see. Let me see the other questions. Yeah. Oh, the intersection of Sonoma. We're actually looking at some plans to uh, modify the segment of Sonoma between Hammond and Farmers as well to hopefully put in some uh, a little bit better bike lanes in that segment with a reconstruction project that's going to be happening there. Um, we have not looked at making uh, East uh, Montgomery and Sonoma basically a couplet. That would be a much larger uh, study related to traffic circulation that actually probably involved the general plan as well. Um, and that wouldn't necessarily um, uh, reduce the amount of traffic. It, it may increase the amount of space, but typically when you do have one-way streets, you actually increase speeds along streets because there isn't any other kind of, there isn't as much friction. So that may be counterproductive for, um, for the speed issue along there. Um, and then I think that was, I think I covered most of those points. So Steve, can we go to, I think, so we have one or two more callers. We do. And our next person in the queue is Chris Eggers. Chris, your microphone has been unmuted. You can state your name for the record if you so choose and then ask your question or make a comment. Good evening. This is Chris Eggers. And I just want to really um appreciate all the work that has gone into thinking about these designs and getting public input and um trying to make it work for everyone it's a very complicated puzzle um what i i just wanted to say briefly was that you know would there be a way to test out the plan 
um, of parking protected bike lanes on Montgomery with a temporary quick build that would cost nominally and uh, would give the people who live there a chance to see what it how it worked for them because um, they are important as well. And I'm wondering if a quick build might give everyone, cyclists, pedestrians, and people who live in that neighborhood a chance to get a feel for what it would be like before making it permanent. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Um, that's a good question. I, I, I don't know if we have a, a means to, um, to do a, a temporary a temporary installation that would that would really give the the residents a I'm just thinking cost wise uh, and and the, the the benefit to doing this as part of a slurry plan is that it doesn't incur costs really we have to replace striping in one form or another so those costs are, are covered with that project this would be an additional cost um, to that and. To be honest, I don't know where we would get the money to do that. Um, and I don't know if you're still have uh, talking, but I did have one question for you. Um, if you could, um, Steve, if you could give her talking permissions. You mentioned a quick build to put in the um, the protected bike lanes. Are you meaning with a car parked uh, away from the curb and then the bike lane next to the curb? Is that what your question is? Yes, I okay. do that. I'm always for protected and connected bike lanes. I'm a very, um, I'm not a timid cyclist, but I know like 65% of the people who would ride their bikes are timid and are fearful for their children and their families. And so I'm thinking of a system that works for citizens of all ages. Yeah, this this would be a, uh, this would be a, a definitely tight place to put in uh, protected bike lanes and may actually exacerbate the, the issue with cars that are there now getting um, sideswiped because the, the parking lane is is quite narrow and um, you're then pushing that car out to even a narrower travel lane than they have currently so that I would have some hesitation in doing that on Montgomery Drive um, and I, I think that would that might be an issue on Montgomery Drive. Um, we have one more caller. We do. Uh, the next person in the queue is is Tom Helm. Tom, your your um, mic has been um, unmuted, uh, so you can state your name for the record if you so choose, and ask your question or make your comment. Hi, it's actually Barbara Moulton. Hi, Rob. Um, hey, Barbara. Uh, thanks for this, all your work on this. I want to suggest that in the narrow reaches of Montgomery Drive, that the speed limit be lowered to 25 miles per hour with those solar powered your speed signs, you know, um, and it, that that would help. Um, I also have to take a lot of issue with the suggestions that bikes just go over to Sonoma Avenue. It just makes cycling even less convenient when we what we want really is to get more people using bikes. Better to send all non-emergency motor vehicles over to Sonoma Avenue and keep them off of Montgomery. Um, those are my thoughts for tonight. Thanks. Thanks, Barbara. Do we have any more hands? That is, oh, we do have, um, we do have, uh, I think I might have, Missed one here, uh, Alexa Forrester. Alexa, your mic has been unmuted. Um, you can state your name for the record, then ask your question or make your comment. Hi, this is Alexa again. Thank you for sticking in with us. And I just had a question, especially because I'm concerned about the speed limits on Montgomery and hearing from a lot of the residents along there. I understand that we can't have speed tables because of the hospital. Is there any way to put in bollards that um, interrupt the through traffic but could be removed in the uh, that would allow bicycles and pedestrians through but block traffic, um, but then could be removed in the case of an emergency? No, the uh, Montgomery Drive is identified as an arterial street. Unfortunately, there are housings, houses that front it. 
um, but because it's an arterial street, it's part of our, our circulation network. So we would not be installing bollards on 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 Montgomery to to decrease the the vehicle traffic. And there. then, what about traffic circles? Traffic circles could be a potential. Um, they wouldn't fit on any of the locations except for when it gets wider, like down at California or Alderbrook in those in those areas. Um, traffic circles would would potentially fit. Again, we haven't we haven't looked at things on, on that nature uh, with this project is strictly a slurry project where we're restriping. Um, so we didn't go into any type of design for traffic circles. Um, though in the future, if a traffic calming for traffic calming project, that could definitely be a potential to to be looked at and designed. Thank you. Great. Thank you. I think with that, that concludes the comment portion of our meeting. I'd actually like to thank everyone for um, providing your comments tonight. And Steve, am I am I correct? We're all done with the comments? Uh, at this point, Rob, I don't see any of the hands raised. Great. Thank you. So with no further questions, I'd like to express my appreciation for all the members of the public that participated. I really do appreciate you spending your time with us and and I recognize this, this was a large chunk of your evening. So thank you. I appreciate the the time and and for those who who stuck in through the entire the entire presentation and, and comment section. Um it we we appreciate um your your feedback and it and it is important to us and if you could put up the next slide with my contact information oh let me do next steps real quick i'm sorry so our next steps we are actually going to our um bike and pedestrian board on november 17th and um we will be presenting this item to them as well to get final input from our bike and pedestrian board um i have everyone's comments here but you're welcome to attend that meeting as well um, and then following those comments, we'll kind of refine our, our final design for implementation with our slurry project. Uh, next slide, please. So this is my contact information. You're welcome to reach out to me by email or via phone. Um, a lot of times these type of conversations are actually much easier if you if we talk on the phone. So I appreciate I do appreciate phone calls. Um, so it doesn't things don't get lost in the translation of email plus they usually go a lot quicker and um time is very important to all of us i know so if you can uh send me a, a phone message and leave your your name in a voicemail i will get back to you at my uh, earliest convenience to do so and if you leave a time for me to get back to you that would even be better and i will try to, to meet your time frames as well as um what i could uh what can you need as well so with that, I'd like to thank everyone once again for joining us uh, this evening. If you'd like to uh, attend the meeting on Dutton Avenue, that will be at 530 on November 16th. So we look forward to seeing you then. That's the section between um, West College and West Third we'll be talking about. Great. Thank you again and good night.